Oh yeah, y'all come on. Talk to me real quick when I'm doing some of this laundry. You know what I'm saying? Oh, <laughs> I thought you liked the angle. I thought you liked the angle. I'm trying to finish washing these clothes up and everything. Now I'm trying to look up some new recipes. Sometimes I like to look up new recipes that I can make during the fall for like my kids and stuff like that. Try to get them to try new stuff. And I was looking up this recipe, different pasta recipes, stuff like that. I'm gonna have to go run and grab a dryer sheet. I don't have one in here. All right. Let me go grab, guys. Let me go grab a dryer sheet. All right. Get that turned on right there. Okay. Now starts my second phase of my day. Ironing. Tons of ironing. You know what I'm saying? Actually, I'm gonna fold these two loads up. I think I'm gonna iron some clothes. All right, there y'all go. Ooh, I'm sorry, I had to, you know, chill out. <laughs> but triggers are teachers, okay? I know nobody likes triggers, like, uh, you know, feel provoked. It could be anything, you know. You never know. Sometimes the smell can trigger somebody, you know. It happens. And it could be something good or bad. All triggers are not bad. Those could be treat uh, good triggers could be teachers. Bad triggers could be teachers. Like, I had a trigger the other day. Um, it was before school started. And it was like, you know, end of the summer, da da da. And I had a trigger where... Um, I heard the ice cream truck, which out here in the suburbs of the boondocks and trailer park, you know, they come sometimes, you know what I'm saying? But I got triggered and it was a good memory from my childhood. I used to get these mystery bomb pops and they used to turn your lips and everything all like blue black, you know what I'm saying? And it was like sour, really good. I used to love my mystery bomb pops. And so then when I got up to the ice cream truck or van, I should say, I ended up getting the screwball. Now, I know you guys remember the screwball. Let me see. It looked like, not like this, but it was like a upside down, like, and it had a little gumball down there or whatever. And I had got like a trigger, remember, um, when I had the last screwball when I was younger and I was walking from school and I had seen uh, one of my friends or whatever. And it was just a really good memory. So that's a trigger. Uh, you can also have negative triggers, which most people, they like, tend to gravitate towards the negative side of things, which, you know, it is what it is. You can get triggered by a smell like, oh, man, I hate the smell of bologna because, you know, my grandfather used to always make bologna. You know, anything, you know what I'm saying? I just can't stand bologna. So it could be stuff like that as well. And those could be triggers. It could teach you, you know, hey, you know, remember the ice cream truck? Teach you to be grateful for the simple things in life, right? Or I hate the smell of bologna. To be grateful that maybe you don't have to eat bologna. Or maybe if you do now, you know, maybe you learn to like it. So triggers are teachers. And sometimes I notice when people get triggered, they feel the need to teach. And I think that's a defense mechanism. Which, you know, is okay. Everybody have their defense mechanism. But I think like when they get triggered, like, you know, like if you see one of your friends, for women, this is a big one, get married. See, because when I get it, you know. That type of thing. And sometimes when you trigger and you feel the need to teach, it could be kind of like hiding, um, you know, maybe some feeling of insecurity or inadequacy and then a feeling of jealousy or envy as well. Right. And it could come out as I'm just trying to help, just trying to get some advice. And it's not really that, you know, we have to be honest with ourselves. You know what I'm saying? And then in being honest with ourselves, we could be OK. We don't have to tell everybody everything, how we feel. But we could be honest with ourselves and say that triggered me, you know. You know, the smell of that man's cologne, that triggered me. You know, I'm lonely as hell. I want some ass at night. You know what? I think I want to get married, right? You know, you could follow, just follow the follow the train of thought, right? And then if it gets too overwhelming, reach out to a friend, some, some professional help. Or you could say a prayer and, you know, whatever you choose to do. Um, write a letter, do some journaling. Journaling is great. Um, and then kind of see, like, why was I, why did I get triggered by that? Why did that trigger me? What did that really make me feel about me? Because when you think about it, it comes back to you. And it could be a good thing or, or, or like I said, it could be, I'm going to say a good thing or a good thing. Because even bad things can be good when we, when we choose to be teachable to them. You have to learn from it. And then that takes, you know, laying a bit of our toxic ego down. Because ego is good as well, you know. But laying a little bit of our toxic ego down and then saying, being honest with ourselves. 
I wouldn't even say anything a lot of the times if I'm, you know, I'm like negatively triggered because it can happen at work or wherever you are. You could be at school. You could be at parents at your conference with your kids. You know what I'm saying? You could be at the vet with your pet, whatever. And so you might get triggered. And of course, you have, we have to conduct ourselves accordingly because we're adults. You know what I'm saying? I get that. But I wouldn't even really particularly say any, anything much. I would kind of just like to sit with myself or tuck it away till later till it's a, a more appropriate time where I can ask myself and maybe in prayer or in journaling and say, why was I triggered? Because I smelled turkey or, you know, and then you could think, oh, I hate Thanksgiving, you know, stuff, stuff like that. And then it could teach you maybe, and it could show you hitting unforgiveness too, maybe with yourself and other people. Um, you can have uh, unforgiveness towards how you grew up or how things happen. So, you know what? And I choose today just to let go of that a little bit more conscious. I'm just going to let it go. You know, I'm grateful that that triggered me because it let me know I'm still alive. So I'm grateful for life. And then I could just release that because I want to be the best version of myself that I'm trying to be. So it took a lot of pain to get to that thought process. A lot of pain. A lot. Like mind numbing pain. Pain that you never would even want to experience. Okay. But I'm grateful that I was able to get to that um, type of thought process. And it's not like I'm just so mature. I don't have emotional responses. No, you get emotional. You know what I'm saying? And hopefully you can have people around you that to give you mercy and grace. Um, when you go through those situations like that, they can be understanding and have compassion. Like, yeah, it's all right, you know. But um, triggers are teachers. Good and the good. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Because it can all be made beautiful in due time. Okay? So I got to fold these clothes and do a little bit of iron. Let me see what time is. I got a little bit of time. Let's see. I got like an hour. The kids getting out of school. Okay. Peace.